Wouldn't you like to add a touchscreen interface for your Spike Prime or Lego Mindstorms robot? What about a fingerprint scanner? Well, you can, and today I'm going to talk to you about the breakout port behind the new Lego distance sensor. Check it out. Look how cool that is. So there's this touch screen on top of um, this uh, articulating stand, and then it's detecting the position of the metal ball. Simply incredible. G'day everyone, my name is Gary, and I'm very surprised that there is so little mentioned about the breakout port uh, in the LEGO Spike Prime and Mindstorms community. Uh, what sort of uh, piqued my interest was uh, this video from Verzoon uh, that sh demonstrated uh, the combination of a touchscreen interface uh, and the LEGO Spike Prime robot. As you can see, the robot is able to sense the position of the metal ball uh, based on uh, where it is traveling on the um, on the touchscreen interface. And then I got in contact with Nard from Verzun, who was uh, uh, developing this project. And uh, we had a few conversations about how this is working. And the key port, uh, the key part of getting this thing working is this, the breakout port behind the new distance sensor. It's been hiding in plain sight. And what this uh, port does is it gives us uh, direct access to uh, all sorts of uh, on-device functions, uh, and it lets us um, communicate with third-party sensors. Third-party sensors. This is uh, what's going to get a lot of uh, robot inventors uh, and, uh, and roboticists really excited, right? Imagine adding things like these touchscreen sensors, fingerprint scanners, uh, temperature scanners, humidity scanners, all sorts of things like that. Uh, can be accessed. Uh, and to find out more information about it, uh, you should check out the technical specifications where we first uh, uh, got introduced to the idea. So here is the link uh, up here for the Spike Prime uh, distance sensor. This is the same sensor that they use in the Robot Inventor set. And uh, if you scroll down, uh, is it key features, distance sensor, uh, from 50 to 2,000 millimeters, that's no, uh, no biggie. But then here is a strange bit of information. Back of the sensor, there is a breakout port. It can be detached from the front of the sensor by removing two screws and provides access to an 8-pin female header that allows direct act and easy access to the LPF2 system for adding third-party sensors and boards. That is incredible. I can't believe that <laughs> uh, this is something that not everybody is talking about. So let's um, uh, see what we need. So here is the um, uh, distance sensor uh, from uh, uh, Spike Prime. Uh, it looks exactly the same as the uh, one uh, from the Robot Inventor Kit. And then at the back of it, there are two screws. But you'll notice that these screws uh, can't be um, uh, unscrewed with normal screwdrivers. You need a uh, star drive, okay? Uh, so here is my um, special uh, screwdriving kit, and then you'll probably need something like this, okay? So this is a, um, uh, I'm not sure if you can see clearly, just zoom in here. As you can see, the, the tip of this is not a, a, a Phillips head, right? It's, uh, it is a, um, a, a shape of a very small hexagon. And then what you need to do is you need to unscrew the back of this sensor. And here it is, okay? You see here, this is the um, uh, the breakout port, all right? So uh, the ultrasonic sensor is actually just uh, treated like another third-party sensor that attaches to this breakout port. And um, uh, if you have uh, a uh, another third-party sensor, you just have to make sure that your pin arrangement is exactly the same 
as this header. Okay, super exciting stuff. But here's the catch. Um, there are no third party sensors that, um, that attach directly to this kind of pin arrangement. Uh, if you have a, uh, an Arduino sensor or something like that, you're going to need to do uh, a few tweaks to make sure that you get that pin arrangement uh, done properly. And um, in order to get that started uh, for um, a, a roboticist who wants to uh, get into third party sensors for Spike Prime or uh, the new Mindstorms Robot Inventor, what you'll need to do uh, first thing is to learn how to use sensors on a system like Arduino. So Arduino has a whole bunch of um, uh, sensors like um, like fingerprint scanners, humidity scanners, um, uh, audio scanners, things like that. Uh, and then you'll have to learn how to communicate between two Arduino systems. That's going to be your very first uh, port of call. And I'm going to provide a link for a tutorial down in the bottom. So make sure you check that out if you're really interested about working on third party sensors. After you have um, uh, managed to get two Arduino sensors uh, I mean, two Arduinos to talk to each other, one of them with a sensor attached, then the next step is to switch one of those Arduinos for your uh, Spike Prime or your Mindstorms hub. You'll probably need to use a program like PuTTY uh, in order to access the MicroPython uh, uh, layer. Uh, and then uh, another important thing is that if you have that third-party sensor attached to your hub, uh, you're going to need to step the, that voltage down. So the voltage for um, uh, the voltage for Arduino is something like five volts, and the voltage for the hub is something like three point something, right? Three point something uh, volts. But then after that, then uh, you'll you'll be set. You'll be able to uh, develop using these third party sensors for um, your Lego robot kit. It's not straightforward at all. It is uh, actually going to be uh, beyond my ability to, to do on a, on a video, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting, even though uh, I wasn't able to get an actual sensor working, uh, but uh, definitely check out Verzoon's um, video about the, um, the ball balancing robot on the uh, touchscreen sensor. Uh, and that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.